Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramf, and I'm here to tell you all the wonderful things that are happening this weekend besides the heat. I got some news items. I got uh, your summer series entitled Clown, based on the video that was made during our media camp week for our summer camp. Summer camps are happening uh, next week. Uh, MCAT is going to be closed during most of our public hours, but our public hours for uh, the week of uh, the next two weeks of our camps, it's animation the camp is 5 to 8 here at MCAT, so if you're interested in checking out equipment, using MCAT uh, to film your videos, or learn how to make a video, MCAT will be open from 5 to 8 next two weeks. Uh, but, if, but of course, between 1 and 5, we're going to be a kids camp for kids to learn some stop animation, so it's going to be nice and fun. Um, we also have uh, new programs that are happening this weekend, and I promise I won't be plugging my stop animation, uh, except for just right now, watch my stop animation. It's called Scott's Stop Motion Anthology. Check it out. Um, I got all your first Friday uh, guide, so uh, uh, so I'm going to have a uh, kind of like a over-the-shoulder kind of art guide, um, kind of like touring you through uh, Missoula where you guys can check out some of the new art installations in downtown Missoula for your first Friday. I'll be also talking about uh, MCAT's uh, Twitch stream. We're going to be uh, Twitch, uh, Twitch stream is where people like um, live stream gaming things. So we're going to be doing a stream. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. Um, Let's see, I got Pre-Critic, which I uh, explore um, movies that are coming out this way by all, by prejudging them. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, I, uh, pretty much it. I got a lot of other stuff as well, more clips and others. Uh, but let's start off with a little bit of weather. Uh, that heat wave is happening over the weekend with highs into 98. Your current temperature is 63, so if you guys are planning on being out and about, now is the time. But then, of course, it'll change within the next couple hours while it gets hotter and hotter. Um, it's going to be high of 98 degrees. Your low tonight will be 56, so there'll be quite a little drop between the temperatures. Um, but of course, uh, pretty much uh, things are going to pretty much stay in the 90s over the weekend. Monday, you can expect those highs to be into the 80s. So maybe things will start cooling off by then. But one thing's for sure is that summer is definitely in full swing. So if you guys weren't here, um, weren't around, weren't in Missoula, or pretty much in the, uh, uh, I guess, the... 200 mile radius of Lincoln, Montana, which is about 90, 100 miles east of Missoula, about east. I don't want to get too technical with the north and south, but they had, that was the epicenter to an earthquake that was about 5.8. Um, and, you know, the probably the one thing I definitely uh, did notice is that everybody who's anybody posted about the earthquake and uh, nobody was hurt. Uh, they might have had a couple, they've had reports of some power outages, but um, yeah, there's really nothing. That really, that really bad happened. It, I mean, it, uh, earthquakes are rare in Montana, so when it happens, it's like, oh my God, uh, what's happening? So that's kind of what happened. It happened around 12:30 at night, and then a couple aftershocks I felt after that. Um, a couple of people I'm, I've talked to said it was like I felt like a whole bunch of aftershocks after the fact. It was just like I only felt like two, and pretty much uh, that's kind of what happened. Um, I mean, there's really not much to say. You know, nothing really bad happened. It was a simple earthquake. Um, in state news, top uh, tribal officials gathered in um, South Dakota in um, Rapid City um, to talk at the Rushmore Plaza in Rapid City on Tuesday to find common ground and common cause on topics as diverse as the fate of grizzly bears to fears over the proposed Keystone XL pipeline. Crow Creek Sioux Tribal uh, Chairman Brandon Sazu said that American indigenous population faces a sustained attack on sacred lands and tribal cultures. More than 128 tribal nations have signed a Reclamation of Independence Treaty of Cooperation in the wake of last month's removal of the Yellowstone grizzly bear from the Endangered Species Act, protecting after more than 40 years. Zinke said that the population has rebounded from uh, as few as 136 bears in 1975 to an estimated 700 today and meets all their criteria for removal of endangered species act uh, protection. So um, just so you guys know that a step up from um, endangered species is vulnerable. So just because something's off the endangered species list doesn't mean we should go grab our rifles and start shooting some bears. That's that's kind of what they're uh, trying to imply. They'd be like, okay guys, let's, let's not get carried away with hunting, but just know that the population is at a certain point where it can sustain itself. We don't have to worry about uh, making sure that they're breeding. That's kind of like the thing is, um, but that's just me. I mean, I, I'm all about just, just leave them alone 
and then when it gets kind of out of hand, it, sometimes it's probably better to um, take care of them in a way that when they extend certain hunting seasons because the, uh, a certain population has grown a little too large. Um, and a lot of the animals, especially in the Missoula area, have gotten a little bold. So a lot of them have actually come into town. Like you have urban deer population, and that's always a problem. And then you have the issues of that. But I don't want to get too much into that. There's definitely a lot going on. And they went to their, for their, uh, and I got this from the Billings Gazette. Um, let's see, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's basically all I had to say about that. Um, they talked a little bit. Of, they talked more about the uh, uh, the grizzly bears, but they also talked about the Keystone XL pipeline. Um, but hopefully, uh, they'll find some kind of uh, um, middle ground for sure, because it seemed like it was more of a um, presentation, um, and whether or not uh, people are going to take it. Uh, uh, is up to them. So in national news, uh, here's something that's interesting that's happening. Uh, Walter Schaub, uh, ethics officer director, uh, uh, quit his job because he thinks uh, rules on ethics in the government are not tough enough. In Schaub's regulation resignation letter he wrote dear mr president i'm resigning my position position as director of the u.s office of government ethics effective wednesday july 19th 2017. schaub an attorney has accepted a job with the campaign legal center a nonpartisan organization of election law experts uh, schaub told npr that the current situation has made it clear that the ethics programs needs to be stronger than it is at the campaign legal center center i'll have more freedom to push for refer reform uh, Shab told NPR, and I also got this information from NPR.org. It's something that really just kind of stuck out to me in general because it's interesting when uh, someone for, uh, who is the U.S. Office of Government Ethics quits their job. It's kind of like a red flag and kind of seeing what is happening in a lot of different things. But I don't want to get too biased. I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. Um, another thing that's happened internationally uh, is that there's future uh, talks about what's happening with North Korea and uh, Donald Trump and the Trump administration. Uh, Washington DC is um, trying to uh, basically push uh, China into basically uh, uh, severing their ties with North Korea. They've had there's always been a long history between North Korea and China. At one time they were uh, one big country. Um, I think it was the uh, I think it was a like Cantonese um, based uh, uh, emperor rulership back in the day. The last emperor uh, basically was the the person who was emperor of China, which wasn't effectively all of China. It was basically kind of like North and South Korea area with the parts of China during World War II. Um, if you saw The Last Emperor, that's kind of what it's about and stuff like that, where he was kind of put in place as like a puppet um, emperor. But that's a little background you didn't know. But the, the point of this uh, particular thing is that the U.S. is really trying hard to get China to cut off ties. And so far, China has uh, cut off... Uh, their main uh, export from North Korea, which is coal export. And I just learned that from um, CNN Associated Press online just a couple minutes ago and whatnot. So I'm kind of unclear about the whole entire story, but you can find out more by going on to CNN.com. You can go find out more information about Walter Schaub by going to NPR, Billings Gazette, they're talking about uh, some of the uh, Sioux Crow tribes um, going down to Rapid City to give that presentation about uh, the bear, their uh, their uh, displeasure with bears being off the endangered species list. And also uh, the earthquake is basically based on social media and uh, personal experience. So that's kind of what's happening in, um, in and around the, the Missoula area in terms of news. Uh, I have a bunch of new programs that are happening over the weekend. And I think these are going to be pretty interesting. Um, and you should totally check out. It's going to be really hot outside. If you guys don't want to be outside, you can be inside and you can watch these, uh, whether you can watch it on MCAT.org or you can watch it when it's on on MCAT, so uh, Channel 189. So when I come back, I'll talk everything about uh, what movies are coming out that I hate for no reason. This is a great opportunity to be able to talk to parents early on in this process so that you can have some information and hopefully make some good choices about what path you're going to go down. You know, I think of this as you're kind of at a crossroads and you're making some choices right now about which path to head down. And I think it's a physics principle that once you get movement in one direction, the easiest thing to happen is to continue that movement down that same path. So that plastic part of your brain really looks at thrill-seeking, risk-taking, and I don't have a graph to show you, but 
when you look at higher risk and lower risk and then age, the ones who enjoy it the most are 16 to 17 year olds. They just, that high risk is like a really good reward. And it's interesting because at 18 and 21 it starts to drop, but it doesn't get down to a level less than when you're 10 years old until you're 26 years old. So there's a long time where that is all really important. Most long-term drug use, alcohol, tobacco, nicotine, starts in adolescence. And we all recognize that. Teens do know they're mortal. They can estimate risk, often overestimating risk. They simply value the reward so much more heavily. And the more risk they take, if the reward is good, is perceived as a better payout. Soft Landing's real success under Mary's leadership is not the stuff of headlines where conflict is preferred, but rather the quiet and unheralded product of dedication and hard work. Outreach is critical and Mary's dance card is full of speaking engagements with groups large and small across Montana. But there's plenty more. When Congolese and Syrian and Eritrean and Iraqi mothers beam at their children's English, part of the credit goes to unseen aides and tutors who help them daily in the schools. Volunteers work long, unglamorous hours picking up furniture and sorting donated clothing and household supplies and setting up homes for new arrivals. Other volunteers teach our new neighbors English and driver's ed and computer, computing and filmmaking, where they learn to tell their own stories. Soccer players hone their skills for our upcoming World Refugee Day Cup, which is on June 17th. Working parents wrestle with new gender roles in childcare as they go to their jobs to pay the rent, supported by mentors and friends. And yes, our new neighbors cope with slights and rude gestures from time to time. And xenophobia. A safe America stands by its core principles, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because it's what makes us strong. We live up to our highest values, and we embrace others in our American melting pot as one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our country was founded on the principles of freedom of religion, a tradition and ideal that forms the foundation of our country. We do not tell people how to pray, and we do not ban people ba based on their religion. Two, no one should fear for their safety because of the color of their skin, what language they speak, or how they pray. Hate must not beget hate. Violence must not beget violence. We need more love and less fear. And those all, all those programs are available on demand at MCAT.org. Let's start off with a whole completely different thing. I have no segue for this next segment. It's called Pre-Critic. All these new movies that are coming out are ridiculous, and I hate them for no reason. Um, yet another installment of The Origins of Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man Origins Part 3, comes uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. A new actor, a new writer, a new director, a new pretty much everything uh, come, coming home to the Marvel Cinematic Universe is Spider-Man Homecoming, aka Spider-Man Origins Part 3, aka Saul Spider-Man. Um, a sixth installment, yes, it's the sixth Spider-Man movie, to a movie franchise that has, that had legs, lost legs, lost credibility, and overall lost respect from fans alike. It's kind of like uh, the new Sonic game that tries to come out and people are just like, I'm so excited for the new Sonic game, and then it comes out and people are just like, uh, yeah. Okay, but I'm I'm assuming this movie's gonna do fine. It just you know it's like you can only tell Spider-Man story so many times, and the whole idea is that he's in high school, uh, being uh, he's a teenager, um, and he's dealing with uh, growing up and dealing with superhuman abilities. So that's kind of like the whole concept of the movie. He comes to his own, overcomes his own personal strive and then wins out in the end, but also loses. It, it's weird because the whole idea of that people can relate to Spider-Man is that he's a superhero, but always fails. But, you know, it's, it's the small victories that count, and that's why people are really engaged with Spider-Man. So let's move on to the next movie. I don't want to get too much into it. 
uh, I don't get this movie. Like, I saw a trailer for it, and the whole idea of the story is this, that he's a guy who dies, and then when he is a ghost, he puts a sheet over his head because, for some reason, they didn't have anything in the budget for, like, CGI. Or maybe they just thought to themselves, like, hey, why not we just, why don't we just throw a sheet over him and just call it a day? And that's what they did in this movie, A Ghost Story, um, starring um, Casey Affleck. Um, basically, if you have uh, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen Manchester by the Sea, just imagine uh, Manchester by the Sea, but instead of everybody else dying, Casey Affleck dies, and then kind of like wanders around as a ghost with the sheet on his head. And it's I gotta say, it's probably the probably the best acting is his co-star is trying not to um, like break character while a person in a sheet is wandering around acting like a ghost. All right, moving on to the next scene. This is a documentary. It's uh, speaking of ghosts. Uh, this is City of Ghosts, and the whole idea of this particular uh, thing is that it would, from based on the synopsis, is basically uh, the uh, takeover of ISIS of a Syrian town, um, and it basically is activists document um, everything that's happening in their city while ISIS is basically taking over their town. I, it's hard for me to really just like knock documentaries it, it, for me because uh, like the older I get, the more I'm just like documentaries are just like real and just like raw and uh, visceral while like movies are just like, oh, there's a hero that overcomes something. The end, everyone's happy or everyone's sad or it, it, it's like you have these movie arcs where the good guy wins, loses, villain loses, villain wins. Um, it's it, it's like I don't know. It's like uh, when they when they talk about the Greek stories, and there's only like eight or thirteen real, uh, basically stories that can be redone. It's where like the villain loses, the villain wins, hero wins, hero loses, both loses. Um, they have a draw, that kind of thing. But this movie is documentary. It probably won't be coming out in major theaters, but you might be able to see it like at the Roxy and whatnot. So. Here, uh, I have really nothing bad to say about this, except this is just more of like a, a, a movie just kind of rehashing the idea that ISIS is bad and how you should empathize with the people who are um, in the cities dealing with ISIS. So that basically concludes pre-critic for your movie pleasure um, or displeasure because I just despise the idea of just like going to see the same kind of movie over and over again, which is most movies. Uh, Anyways, let's move on. I got a, uh, I got a brand new uh, uh, movie that I would say is better than any of those three movies that I just showed you. And it was made by our very own Summer Camp Kids. It's called Clown, part of our summer series that will be shown every single Friday. So here is Clown. Ha <laughs> 
and uh, at the end name was played by description um, moving on we got some um, awesome um, art that is happening in and around Missoula and here is your guide to click first Friday <laughs> just like hold it off I was like I had to really think about it before I said it uh, so this is Main Street Montana um, it's going to be at a &E Architectures. Um, Missoula artist Laura Bl uh, Blaker unveils her newest art e e exhibit um, um, featuring colorful paintings of Montana's main streets. This will be the first showing of her ambitious multi-year project that eventually will include more than 300 paintings. She'll be featured 15 to 20 Western Montana main streets, including Missoula, Hamilton, Darby, and Whitefish. Um, the next one is... Patty Franklin is doing an art show called Flora, Fauna, and Folderol. Um, so the, the, this is opening reception. This is at the artist shop. The show runs from July 1st through the 31st. An experience and instinct guide my hands while my design are born. My designs, sorry, are born from a joyful heart and a love of bright colors. I strive um, to offer mosaics that are uplifting and intriguing, sharing what lives in my imagination. Up next, we got uh, works by Tyler Brumfield, and this is work sent. Um, I, I'm sorry if I butchered that, but that's the way I read it, and that's the way it is. Okay, so July's first Friday exhibit features the work by Tyler Brumfield in this show entitled Work Sync. Um, be sure to come down and ch see the latest Frontier Space Missoula Friday today from 5 to 9 p.m. and it's going to be in Fronti Frontier Space Gallery. So you can check that out if you so choose. Uh, you got the se second annual sequential art show and this is happening at Gecko Designs which is basically right next to Pie Hole which is just like right across the street from where MCAT is. I'm like pointing this way and doesn't make any sense but to me it does. To you it'd be like he's just pointing off camera. But I can pretty much do that with anything. Oh, it's over there now. No, no, no. Actually, it went back there. Anyways, um, first Friday, Gecko Designs, second annual sequential art show, a celebration of sequential art and graphic storytelling in all its forms, comic designs, strips, booklets, and other various forms of expression will be dis on display. Original works by Theo Ellsworth, Tony Gregory, uh, D.L. Johnson, and more. They'll be hung on the walls, printed volumes, collection, zines, and comics from... Uh, yeah, I already, they basically, they just said it more than once in that thing. So moving on, we got a thing from Brookshire Hathaway, and this is Rob Rez. Um, join us Friday. Local Arborist Rob Rez has been drawing for the Missoula Independent and tattooing Missoulians for decades, and he shares his vibrant acrylic painting with the community and this has happened at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Montana Properties um, starting at 5 p.m. All these are starting at First Friday. 5 to 8 is the big peak hours for First Friday activities. Up next we got uh, um, Vessel which is b recent works by Seth Charles um, at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Clay Studio of Missoula is proud to present a solo exhibition featuring the ceramic works of recent artists and residents Seth Charles Seth's primary philosophy influence are the Japanese concept of wabi and sabi that views imperfection and irregularities as forms of beauty. It is ex easy to find a geolo geological, sorry, uh, <laughs> um, in all sorts of things. You have rock fixtures, lynchens, moss, enduring wood, and dry like beds. In the name, of, to name a few of the kind of like the inspirations and kind of the ideas of what his artwork looks like. You can kind of kind of see what it's, you can expect from the clay studio. This, but this is one of many things that you guys can check out as why as well. I'm going to move on to the next thing. Uh, Monty Dolak is doing a show, and it's going to be at the Frame of Mind, starting uh, the same time as every other thing. Um, he has continuously inspired. He had his own gallery for a while. Now it closed, and now it's a fabric shop. But he's going to be doing a thing at the Frame of Mind um, with a meticulous eye for detail. Monte brings a viewer into his work, um, creating an intimate connection between the viewer and the art. Monte continuously draws inspiration from his work from his many travels across the our great state. Uh, moving on, the last one I'm going to show you guys. Um, there was two more, but I couldn't import the uh, the JPEG image to put on the over the shoulder. So I said. Just scrap it. I'm not going to go the extra mile <laughs> for that. Um, okay, here's the last one. I don't know why I'm just like going off the rails. But anyways, in memory of Mary Beth, Mary Beth um, um, Percival, um, Mary Beth Percival was a staple in Missoula art scene. Her longtime battle with dementia did not stop her from continuing to do work that she loved. 
Her strong spirit and kindness will leave important to so many, and they will honor her legacy through their gallery at the Frame of Mind. So there's a lot of stuff happening at the Frame of Mind. This is just one of many artists that will be there. Um, she was born in 1945 in Shelby, Montana, and grew up in the Big Hole and Boulder Valleys. Um, she's best known for her watercolor paintings, many of which illustrate her strong bond to the country where she grew up. Um, she has painted personal and intimate views of big sky country. She enjoys painting scenes that are experienced by um, linger, lingering near streams and... Oh, lingering. Oh, God, I'm awful with this. <laughs> and the riverbanks and exploring the trail that beck on into the mountain's world. Her paintings also celebrate the simple pleasures of daily life, sun streaming through the, uh, through the window on a a uh, bouquet of spring uh, pussy willows or the gathering of a fresh laundry from the clothesline so very contemporary very um nice landscape very nice the simple wide small just kind of expressing the world as she saw it so um that would be a nice little art installation and that pretty much concludes everything that you need to know what's happening in all the art museums all over the place but I have an art clip for you guys made by our very own Rick Phillips, and it highlights all the, the new art that's happening at the Mozilla Art Museum, which will be doing their uh, first Friday event tonight. And they usually have the artist that I'm showing you guys in this one, and it is Maggie Hiltner, who will probably be talking at 7 p.m. because they usually, uh, when they have the new art installation, they have the artist have a presentation around 7, 7.30 p.m. at the Art Museum. So Mozilla Art Museum, check it out. Um, this is some of the works that are being presented there this month, uh, kind of like being their premiere. This is like they have a soft opening, but this is like kind of like their big opening. What they do is for the first Friday. So without further ado, here's an art clip. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about all about events and some MCAT news to help you guys get through the weekend um, safely and to try to stay cool. Hey guys, welcome back. Here are some of your events that are happening in and around the Missoula area. Let's start with the very first thing that's happening currently. It is the Montana Outdoor Recreation Expo at the Missoula Fairgrounds. It's already going on. It's going to be going on pretty much all week long. Um, you, um, there's hands-on activities, demonstration vendors, scholarships, all are available for it as well uh, for those who can of certainly afford certain outdoor recreational um, equipment and more. So that's happening at the Missoula Fairgrounds pretty much all weekend long starting today. Um, so, and then up next, we got a panel discussion. So it's a Russia and the U.S. election. So um, as if you couldn't see this um, beating a dead horse for sure, uh, is that the Univers University of Montana, <laughs> that's a little bit of my bias coming out, sorry about that, um, joined the Montana World Asso Affairs Council and the Montanans for National Security on July 7th for the panel discussion on Russia interference with in the U.S. election. The panel will feature Senator John Tester, Professor, professor Anthony Johnson and the council's president, um, uh, Emuturis. Sorry about that. I'm just like butchering names left and right. Bob, um, Senator Danes was invited to speak on the panel, but will be a unable to join us. 
Anyways, uh, admission is free, um, and it's happening at 9 a.m. at the University of Montana, which is happening now. Sorry about that if I just, if you just found out about it from me right now, so you missed it. <laughs> Opening date from flower cloth to story cloth. Uh, sorry, f cloth. Sorry, it's f f flower cloth to story cloth. Missouri Museum is doing the first day to view in the ex exhibition from flower cloth. Uh, sorry, from flower cloth to story cloth. Mong textures in the MAM collection at Mizzou Art Museum. Gallery hours are from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., but of course it'll be extra, it'll be open even longer for the first Friday events that are happening tonight as well. Um, face paintings at the Family's First Children's Museum from 11 to 11.30. Uh, face painting is always fun for the kids. Kids love being tigers or whatever, or Spider-Man. Um, probably be Spider-Man because it's, it's the premiere of Spider-Man today. Anyways, kids table at the library for any kids who are under, who are 18 and under who want a free lunch. It's happening at the Missoula Public Library. They do it every single weekday at 11.30. Do it. Be part of it. Get some fresh food. Um, Missoula Food Co-op provides the food for the kids. They'll also be providing food for the kids um, and snacks for us during um, our uh, our camps, for the next three camps this, this year. So I want to say thank you again for allowing us to do that as well. Um, here's another thing that's happening for your, um, let's see. Do, do, do. Hold on one second. Okay, uh, this is what's happening for your Friday night. I, I always love promoting these things. Um, Ms. Children's Theater, they do camps every sing a lot of times, and this week they did a camp for Robin Hood. So they'll be performing their original take on Robin Hood at the MCT Center for Performing Arts, 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. Um, uh, they do have two different casts. They have a 4 p.m. cast and a 6 p.m. cast, but the, uh, the time is simply long ago, and the place is magical. Uh, mythical Sherwood Forest, their hero, our hero, Robin Hood, and his merry band of colorful characters um, seek the help of foresters, uh, manage a wayland to the aristocrats, and set out to rescue Maid Marian and Marian's maid. <laughs> Prince John tries to stay calm as his sheriff, guards, and horsemen botch Robin's arrest thanks to the uh, aromic skunks. Um, <laughs> Wacky humor and the original and an original score uh, um, added to this fresh new look of the legendary outlaw in this legendary time. This is an hour-long performance at 4 p.m. and at 6 p.m. and um, you can check it out. Support the children's theater, buy some cool merch, and that's basically what's happening for your uh, daily events. I already told you basically your first Friday guide. So here are some of your uh, night uh, night events that are happening in and around Missoula. Um, Top Hat is having a concert with uh, Useful Jun Jenkins. It's bluegrass music, and no one has really posted anything else for your Friday night. So everything's pretty much geared towards Friday, only because uh, by the time it reaches Saturday, you got the Missoula 5K. Part of the Missoula 5K race registration fee includes the technical race shirt, uh, medal, and chip timing. Starting tomorrow morning, the Missoula 5K is a fun way to participate, participate in Marathon Weekend, whether you're a family member or a marathoner, or just want to shake out your legs for the marathon uh, you it's a great way to just to check it out do it it's going to be starting at Karis park 8 a.m tomorrow morning um another thing that's happening is all the museum markets are open from 8 a.m to 1 p.m um just check it out farmer's market is great i always go to it it's fun whatever <laughs> row show is happening at the southgate mall um uh, from 8 a 10 a.m to 5 p.m you can visit Clark Court to see all the rainbow of beautiful flowers on display grown by local gardeners and is presented by the Missoula Row Society. Um, flower submission registration is from 6 to 10 a.m. So it's never too late. If you have beautiful roses and be like, I want to show off my roses, go on down. You can get registered probably about 9 a.m. and have your roses on display for the rest of the day. It'll be great. Um, and there's natural light that goes inside the, uh, the area as well. But parking might be a problem because of all the construction. Um, Saturday family workshops happening at the Missoula Art Museum starting at 11 a.m. on Saturday. It's free. And learn how, how Alexander Calder made some of the first art mo mobiles. Then make your own using natural materials collected outdoors such as unusual branches, sticks, and other found objects. Enjoy an opportunity to work with your child on creative projects. Older children may delve into projects on their own, but parents are asked to stay and work with children under the age of seven. And drop-ins are all welcome for all workshops free of charge 
Uh, it's on a first come first serve basis and it starts at 11 a.m. at the Mizzou Art Museum um, they usually have all their classrooms in the basement and it's 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 a beautiful there's a great wide space and there's always plenty of room uh, full moon s uh, sound bath learning center at Red Willow is doing a full moon sound bath um, from 7.30 to 8.30. It's a one-hour workshop it's for $10. The full moon is the time to release what is no longer supporting us. Old habits, pattern, approaches, anything in our lives that are holding us back. In the workshop, Arwen will utilize her skills as a classically trained musician and Reiki master to facilitate a safe space for deep re relaxation, a place where our bodies can best heal and balance themselves, where the sound of bronze Himalayan singing bowls, instruments whose uh, vibrations and overtone allows the mind and focus uh, the sound current, they will carry us from everyday cares and concerns. So the whole idea of this one is basically, you remember that Jeff Bridges commercial where he's just like holding the little bar barrel and he does some throat singing? That's basically what what it is um, in a nutshell but there's way more to it I'm just not giving it as much credit as it probably deserves okay so here are some of your night events that happened on Saturday over the weekend um, st starting off with uh, absolutely with Chris Moon at the Badlander the ruins is gonna be a rock uh, show that's happening at uh, the hot springs barn grill Karaoke is going to be at VFW, so if you want to get your karaoke fixed, VFW is the place to go. Crow and the Canyon is going to be folk music at the Top Hat Lounge, but that pretty much wraps up your Saturday. I do have a Sunday thing because it's the Missoula Marathon starting at Karis Park at 6 a.m. It's going to be really cool. It's uh, it's the Missoula Marathon. It's like the biggest thing, um, and um, there's going to be a famous uh, folk um, if you haven't already read The Missoulian today, there's somebody who's really famous who uh, broke many records running marathons, especially in Las Vegas, dressed as Elvis. Um, he, he came out as first. I barely kind of skimmed through the article. I was considering putting it in the news uh, for my uh, news, news, news segment, but I would just kind of mold over it. But Mizzou Marathon will be great. It's a great way just to... Um, um, basically, it's been a part of Missoula for such a long time, and I don't do it justice by just by talking about it. The marathon course is well marked with both cones and arrows on the road. You will notice every mile is marked on the road with a eight foot tall mile marker. Okay, so anyways, uh, the next thing that's happening on here is the is a rodeo. So the rodeo is happening over the weekend, but this is the main part of the rodeo, starting at 12 p.m. The 75th annual Drummond Kiwanis. PRCA Rodeo, one of the Montana's longest running rodeos in his 75th year, presenting a good old fashioned rodeo at the home of the world famous Bull Shippers. And, and it's weekend, so you don't want to miss. Um, it starts at the rodeo parade starts at noon. The uh, the actual rodeo starts at 2 p.m. So you can be there and check it out. But of course, they'll be doing all sorts of events all weekend long. And I even think there's some events happening tonight starting at 5 p.m. as well in Drummond. So it's a great way just to get out and go check out a rodeo. One of the longest running rodeos, 75 years. It's a big deal. So that's uh, kind of what I want to end on in terms of all your events that are happening in and around Missoula. Uh, but here's something that's happening for MCAT in terms of MCAT news. MCAT will be uh, streaming uh, via Twitch. Uh, if you go to Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash MCAT gaming channel, we'll be basically gaming all day from 11 to about 8. We'll be doing a parklet just outside. So it's uh, it's gaming. You know how you're, like, you're always stuck inside gaming? We're going to be outside. We're going to be outside the, pretty much the whole day playing video games all different variety of video games. Um, I mean, there's uh, it, it could be rated for E for everybody all the way to mature. So it's it's very just like anything can happen. We're going to try to keep things going, and we're going to – I'm basically going to talk pretty much as much as I can nonstop for the whole entire day, and we're going to start that probably about in an hour and a half about. And if you're watching this afternoon, we're probably already on as well. We might even stream – some of the stuff from our VR. I have that set up so we'll be able to stream some of the things that you would see in our VR. But from what I've seen in the past that people who watch VR streams usually get vertigo. <laughs> but that's that's what's happening. I'll be doing some live streams on MCAT uh, as well just to kind of like give updates on what's happening with that, the games that we'll be going to be playing. If you want to find out more information, um, just go to twitch.tv and look up MCAT Gaming Channel. Um, I'll be posting a whole bunch of things on it as well through our Facebook and Twitter. Um, if you want to find more information about MCAT, you go on to MCAT.org. You can also go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. I made you write out to us because I'm too cheap to buy the uh, the full licensing to wakeupmissoula.com. Um, it's a great way for you to uh, watch current videos, 
current episodes, past videos, past video segments. I like to put up little short segments, summer series, dubbing stuff, um, past interviews with Gary Gillette. I want to thank those guys, Travis Welsh and Dax Fa uh, uh, Frazier again, um, Jesse Rogers, uh, just had her fourth at the fort, uh, Heidi West. Just all sorts of wonderful interviews that I've done in, just in the last two weeks. Um, but yeah, um, that's basically what's happening in and around Missoula. Um, for MCAT, um, I'm Scott Ramph. I hope you enjoyed the show just as much as I have enjoyed the show. I kind of slightly enjoyed the show, but <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay cool. Um, come by MCAT. If you want to game with us, by all means, I don't care. Like, if you have a game suggestion, um, just say, hey, I, wanna, I want you guys to play this game, and we'll play it. But the whole idea is that I'm going to make fun of pretty much every single game um, while we play it. So don't get butthurt about it. <laughs> Sorry about the language. Anyways, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thanks for joining me this morning. Mm -hmm.